Good morning. This is a throwback video. I want to have a discussion on how I went from poor <clears throat> to rich. How I went from being the product of a single mother environment, being a product with some male mentorship growing up. It was a different era when I grew up, but the whole process of going from a dude who went to pawn shops, did title pawn, errands rent to own, all types of financially stupid mistakes were made and how I worked my way out of that situation, how I worked my way out of that because in the resetting of the channel, I made a decision to remain honest, upfront, and helpful. And I feel this video will help people during this hype cycle where people are trying to cheat their way to my position. And I'm gonna make some observations. And the first observation is, unless you bought Bitcoin early, it's gonna be hard for you to become a millionaire off Bitcoin. This is statistical fact, you can add it up, you can just do the math. But what this has created is a mania where people are waiting on the next altcoin to take off. And they can go ahead and get rich quick. Now, let me tell you why that is harmful. As someone who went from being poor to rich, my first wealth cycle was the storage auction business. And what did that do? That taught me, well, actually, that wasn't my first wealth cycle. My first wealth cycle was my first business, GC Solutions. And that taught me that I could save 200K in the bank. I wasn't a millionaire, but let me tell you what that did for my life. And this is the thesis of why I want you guys to start a business and get to $250,000 a year. At that point, I was not a millionaire. I had a lot of cash. I had a paid off brand new BMW. Uh, my credit at that time, I had prepared my credit. I had good credit, I had cash, I had a lot of opportunity. And I wasn't a millionaire. You don't have to be a millionaire to pay cash for your damn car, man. So that actually did the rewiring of my mental. It rewired my mindset. It rewired my prerogative. It, it just totally took me out. Because I want you to think, two years prior, I was, I was homeless living in a boarding house before that event happened. So that was the first wealth cycle for me to go out of average normal person income. And once again, I was not a millionaire, but I could flex like I was a millionaire if I wanted to. I could flex like that, but I didn't even flex. I mean, I felt, I'm gonna tell you, when I did that deal and they paid me $62,000 in one single check, that was the most money I had ever seen with my name attached to it. I went to the bank, I cashed the check, literally cashed it, and they gave me cash money. So I went to the BMW dealership, walked around, I want that. And the total price of that car came up to be about $55,000 drive out. I felt like a millionaire. I felt like a million bucks. I was like, this little kid from Alabama went to the BMW dealership, picked one of the most expensive BMWs they had at the time, paid cash and drove it out. 
And that began my cycle of paying cash for cars. And I was not a millionaire. I was a highly paid person, but I was not a millionaire. And then I actually drove that house, that car to my friend's house, a friend at the time. And after that, he saw that car, he stopped talking to me. True story. So that was my first wealth cycle, that job and that business. And it altered me because essentially, here's what's gonna happen if you hit a good lick with Bitcoin or crypto. Within mere months, you'll be right back to where you were because you don't have the acclimation points to having money. You have been able to see me here on YouTube for 12 years and I've had money for 12 years, 12 years. And you've seen that my money has gone up because I am, and let's talk about that mental, that mental game. I am used to having money. I'm used to having money in the bank. It is my norm. Now what happens to you? Let's talk about this chick I was dating. She looked like Marilyn Monroe, beautiful girl. But financially, <clears throat> she was a dumpster fire. She got a hold of $7,000. What did she do? She took a, a month off from her job, took some trips, bought some shit, and literally within a month, she was right back to where she was before she got the 7,000. This is where many of you are. I'm not trying to be dismissive. I'm not trying to be insulting. But look at the behavior that happened when the stimulus money came out. You saw more new cars on the road than ever before. People get money, they spend money. This is not how you get rich in America. It's not, it's not how you get rich in America. And that second wife, the first wealth cycle was the job. They gave me the money to pay cash for BMW. The second wealth cycle, was that first business, and this is, this is the thing. Going back to that boarding house, I was, um, I learned that the reason I was homeless is not because of my ex-wife as much as I wanted to blame it on her. The reason I was homeless was because of me. I had to, in that boarding house, I started to take accountability of who I was, where I was, and what I was doing. And I got me a second job and I saved all that money. In a minute, I'm gonna tell you why that was important. And I had a, my first job, which is what I paid my bills. And then when I got laid off that third time, I had money in the bank. And it took me, from the point I got laid off to getting hired at rent crate it took me six weeks. So I had enough money to pay my bills for six weeks, even though I wasn't working. And that's why I stress and I push and I'm just being redundant with, you need a savings account. You need to stack some cash somewhere. And I get people, cash is trash, cash is trash. And I'm like, no, it's not. I can tell you. I can give you events of my life where having cash in the bank was one of the best decisions I ever made. And I learned from being homeless that I needed to have some cash in my life. So I got laid off. I had cash money in the bank. And then I got the best job I ever had at that point in my life. And then I went to the, and went to rent a crate, panel systems, business environments, and then I did my own business. And through this process, I learned that this is one of the things that you're gonna to need to learn if you wanna be wealthy. How to hold on to money. How to hold on to money. Uh, there's some YouTube channels that are giving you presentation that they're spending every dime, and that looks great to be riding around in a new whip. But like I spent 200K on two cars. If I wanted a Ferrari, I could have bought a Ferrari. 
pay cash for it. If I wanted a Rolls Royce, I could have bought a Rolls Royce, pay cash for it. But let me tell you the story of the Porsche. I saw that Porsche in 2017. And I could have went ahead and filled out a credit app and drove that sucker home, but I didn't do that. I said, what can I do to make my business make more money so I can pay cash for this car? Because I was in a cash for car cycle. This is something I've been doing for years. And 2020, two and a half years later, I had that car. Because essentially what I wanted to do was set my finances up where I could spend that money and it wouldn't hurt me. 2017 was almost a million dollar year, but it wasn't quite. I had a lot of expenses in 2017, a lot of expenses. So if I had let 100 G's go for a car, I would have felt it. I would have felt it. I would have had to take money from somewhere else to get that car, and I didn't want to do that. So I, since I'm in the habit, it's a habit holding on to money. It's a habit of paying cash for cars. Regardless of all of these financial geniuses, you paying money for depreciating that shit. You paying money for depreciating that asset. I'm about to be an elitist motherfucker. I got more money than you. I know that hurts your feelings. Like these clowns in my neighborhood. I've kind of assumed that I make more money than anyone else on this block. And I'm black. And it ain't supposed to happen. How is this little Negro making more money than me and I got my PhD? Got some PhDs. All the folks around here like, let me go ahead and give you the, the setup. My neighborhood is the upper end of working class people. These are upper middle class people with jobs. And million dollar houses that they're financing with mortgages. But go over there, <laughs> it's so different. And I have learned that when I come here on YouTube and I show how I live and I talk about paying cash for a car, many of the broke ass people will chime in. He's paying money for a depreciating asset. In my garage, Virtually everyone that's criticized me in my garage, I have a higher net worth than they do in my garage. And this is one of the things that is frustrating with YouTube because you get these people who are purported financial geniuses with no results. You ever notice when you look at a YouTuber who's talking about making money and you look at the background and the background doesn't look remarkable? Here's a, another fun fact for you. If you got some money, you're gonna spend some money on something that's gonna make you happy. This is just facts. But first wealth cycle, second wealth cycle, the third wealth cycle. The third wealth cycle was the storage auction business which taught me a lot. In that third wealth cycle, I never became a millionaire. Never, maybe if you wanted to put the earnings of the company and two exit, I would be a millionaire on paper. But at that point, <clears throat> I think the most money I had in the bank was 100K because I spent a lot of that money that I saved up from the first businesses in that business. We had a lot of cost. We had a warehouse. We had leased trucks. We had staff. We had a second warehouse. And that business was a high cash consumption business. I think our monthly cost at the highest point was like 50,000 a month between buying units, and paying bills, 50K a month. So that was a very cash intensive business. And it taught me a lot. It taught me how to sell. It taught me how to market. It taught me how to talk to people. It taught me so many things. And I'm very grateful for the third wealth cycle because essentially it was steps. Each step taught me more. 
and then the fourth wealth cycle. Now, this went on for years. <clears throat> this is why I keep telling you, let this quick money hustle go. This went on 1999 to 2009, 10 year window in, me, in my first wealth cycle, my second wealth cycle. In 2009, my fourth wealth cycle began. And that's the wealth cycle that made me a millionaire in three years. From 2009 to 2012, I became a millionaire. So I took all of those things I learned from the wealth cycle number one, wealth cycle number two, wealth cycle number three, and put them into wealth cycle number four. And that's how I became a millionaire in three years. So really, if you look at it, it took me 13 years of business to become a millionaire. And I was making good money, living well, eating well, but I wasn't a millionaire. I wasn't a millionaire. <clears throat> and this is another thing. If you're doing the right things, you know what's gonna happen the day you become a millionaire? You're gonna go to work. You're not gonna pop champagne. You're not going to, cause uh, that year when I made that 1.5 million, and I looked at my bank account, my bank, bank, my bank account has had never looked like that until recently. And I was like, whoa, son? You a cash money millionaire. And then the next day I woke up and I went back to work. See, what I want to, to put to you guys is the mindset of getting money, keeping money, handling money correctly. Because I've not backslid. You always hear, oh man, I was a millionaire and I lost it all. Let me tell you why those people do it. They're stupid. I know people hate it when I talk about other people, but they're stupid. You wanna know why they're stupid? When you get money, you're supposed to partition a sum of that money away from yourself. We're not gonna use this money for business. We're like, with the car business. I have a set sum of money that I'm gonna use for the car business, even though I could put a lot more into it I'm like, this is what we're putting in the car business and the car business has to perform. So essentially what you got is someone who become a millionaire on paper, they're overly leveraged and then something bad happens and they lose everything. When you are a cash money millionaire and you partition your money, there ain't no such thing as losing everything and starting all over. And th this is one of the things I want to illustrate to you. I will never, ever start all over again. I may have a down year, but I will never, ever go broke. I will never, ever be homeless again. And also, one of the reasons that I flirt around with buying this apartment complex is that would make me permanently wealthy. That, ad, that one asset will make me permanently wealthy and that's why I flirt around with it. But once again, once you accumulate the knowledge and learn how to handle money, like I'm getting ready to start a credit repair business. And you wanna know why? Even though I have like 40 credit cards and I only have one that I use on the regular, y'all ain't like me. And I got to teach you how to be like me, have good credit, have cash, and deploy. Because essentially, in this hype cycle, everyone's telling you not to use cash, to use credit. And as a financially savvy person, this is what I know about credit. Your credit is capped by your income. You can only get so much credit based on your income. I don't care if you have an 850 credit score. You can only get so much credit unless you're gonna lie on your credit app. And fun, fun, fun fact about that. Let's say you lied on your credit app and you got all this credit and it went bad. And then the bank did an investigation and found out that you lied. Guess what? You can't bankrupt out of that. 
because you committed fraud. It's these finer details that people don't like to talk about. I know a guy who did it. This is how I know this. He lied on his credit apps about his income. He got all this credit. It went bad. The bank came after him. The bank sued him. The bank got his tax returns and saw that he had lied on his credit app and the bank challenged the court uh, bankruptcy proceedings and he could not bankrupt out of those debts. I think they're dogging him to this very day. To this very day. Because you know what the bank did? The bank got petty on him. The bank would move it over to a collection agency and then the collection agency would sell the debt to another collection agency and renew the cycle all over again. I mean, this stuff has been on his credit report for like 20 years. Bank ain't supposed to do that. But the bank got petty on him because he committed fraud. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand, and this is coming from someone who used to be homeless. You can do this if you would get out of your own way. And what do I mean by that? If you would stop looking for all of these quick money hustles. I just went ahead and just went down the whole road and told you I went through four wealth cycles before I became a millionaire. Many of y'all are trying to do this in three to six months. And I understand there are people on the internet who are telling you, you can do this in three months. There's this chick who has a YouTube channel. She was picked by the YouTube algorithm. She has like literally 15 videos and she makes 25,000 a month. Her videos get pushed. And she has a drop shipping business. She has a house. She makes like 30,000. She ain't a millionaire yet. She ain't a millionaire. And she never says she's a millionaire. I'm gonna, I'll be, you know, her name is Sarah Finance. She never says she's a millionaire. She doesn't make those kind of claims, so I'm not putting that on her. But this is just to show you, she makes $30,000 a month, probably 50 by now, and she ain't a millionaire, but she could live like a millionaire if she wanted to. This is the point I'm getting you. This is why the $250,000 mark is so critical, because I feel that the average person with the right application of information can get to that 250. I feel you can do that. And it's gonna take you a few years. Yeah, it's gonna take you a few years. And this is why I think all of this attention to crypto and the stock market is going to essentially Learning how to invest in the stock market, learning how to buy crypto, these are skills that will only benefit you in a bull market. Because when crypto goes down, you ain't making no money. You, in many cases, if you borrow money to buy your crypto, you could be in trouble. And a lot of people are doing that right now. But if you spent that same time to build a business, to learn how to make money, to learn how to generate cash flow, that is a lesson that will serve you for the rest of your life. Rest of your life. And this is one of the reasons I, you know, because the moist parade, the moist men, let me go ahead and tell you something. <clears throat> I like to mess with Erica because even before I became a millionaire, I was dating young women. Now, part of that is I don't look my age. That helps a lot. Um, that helps out. I mean, that's everything. Let's just keep it a buck. Uh, Alan Roger Curry, he didn't look his age for a long time. He's just starting to look old. He's just, he's almost 60. So that has been very helpful. Very, very helpful. And I can get a young woman. I can. Now, the thing that Erica likes to talk about is if you are broke, dick, Danny. Uh, it's gonna be kind of hard for you to get a woman. Any woman. It's gonna be hard for you to get a broke woman. 
You wanna know why? Let's talk about Broke Dick Danny energy. Broke Dick Danny is always looking for a quick lick, not a sustainable business model. <clears throat> this is why the path to wealth is partially mental. It's mental in behaviors. And <clears throat> so many people <clears throat> are trying to be like Broke Dick Danny, come up. Let me give you an example. Broke Dick Danny, if Broke Dick Danny won the lottery, you know what Broke Dick Danny would do? He would buy some hookers, some cocaine, and buy a Hellcat. <clears throat> and then he would quit his job, then he would go out and buy a big ridiculous house, and he would go out and buy more stuff that are liabilities, because with a house, even if you pay cash, you have to property taxes, you have insurance, you have maintenance, upkeep. And within five years, Broke Dick Danny will be close to back where he was. And this is the id of America. Right now, you're seeing the id of America. We have governors who are now suspending unemployment benefits to urge people to take their asses back to work. This is the id of America, the get over economy. I feel that there's gonna be a certain segment of America, 30, 35%, that's gonna be part of the get over economy. The broke dick Danny economy. The penniless Priscilla economy. And these folks are gonna make up the audience of the moist men. In the comment, in the, in the last video I did before I took my break, someone was like, let me give you some criticism. Your videos are too long. Kevin Samuels has hangouts two and three hours long and gets hundreds of thousands of views. My videos are not too long. And it's like, and then he went and made the moist man comment. You bragging about your house, man. Let's talk about that. Me saying I live in a million dollar house ain't bragging, bruh. It's facts. It ain't bragging. Let, let me go ahead and explain to you why you don't have any rich friends, my dear moist man. If someone is doing better than you, you consider that to be bragging. I got some friends who are millionaires and my friends who were millionaires, you know what I did? When I got that Porsche, I sent them a picture of it, texted it to them. And it's like, oh, congratulations, congratulations. Oh, that's a pretty car, that's a pretty car. Did I do that with my poor friends? Hell no! I couldn't do it with them. So me, living well, eating well, driving well, living that life, ain't bragging, bruh. It's facts and you hate it. And I'm gonna tell you why you hate it. You know in your little punk ass heart that you're not gonna do the work. You're not gonna do the work. I mean, you have got to do the work. And this is one of the biggest barriers to keep you from getting wealthy. You feel that you're gonna win the lottery or buy some crypto and get instantly rich. And as long as you have that mindset, why do the work? Why work hard? It makes no sense, Jen Glendon. It makes no sense at all. It makes no sense whatsoever for you to sit down and do the work. It makes no sense whatsoever. And one of the things that I want you guys to understand is in 2021, you can get wealthy in America. I'm going to say, depending upon what you pick, how hard you work, you're looking at three to 10 years. Now, I didn't have any of this information. I had no one to break down wealth cycles to me. I went through four wealth cycles. And you want to know what the fifth wealth cycle will be for me? When I'm making a million a month, that would be my fifth wealth cycle. 
and it's steps. It's steps. It's a process that takes years. Takes years. And for those people who don't understand the process, don't understand the, because essentially, uh, one of the things that I have chose not to do is talk about crypto. Because once again, personal belief, unless you're in that top, in the third income zone, 150, 200K, where you have money to play with, it doesn't really make sense for the average person. But right now, the crypto marketing department is pushing crypto on everybody. You wanna know why? More people buy crypto, crypto price goes to the moon. It's not like they're trying to help you. They're trying to help themselves. And it's funny, but this is how I went from being poor to rich. Now, part of my filth wealth cycle is becoming wealthy. And that's something that I'm working on because I have been able to make really good income for decades. And now, let me tell you why I'm playing around with starting more businesses. Let's talk about the 150,000 that was chilling in my personal checking account. That's the money I pay myself. I wasn't spending it. That 150, when I get it shaped up the way that I want to, and I get about 20 cars, I would be doing about eight, let's see, 20 cars at $800 a month. Each 10 is 8,000. I would be doing 16,000 with 20 cars, 16,000 a month. Now, uh, I get, I spend 150,000 150, on those 20 cars and I get a monthly return of $16,000. In 10 months, less than a year, I've got my 150 back, okay? And then I enter into cash cow territory. So this is how I'm going to invest. I'm going to invest in businesses because when I did the math, let's say I took $150,000, which would be impossible right now, unless I bought way out in the country and bought a, a rental property. That rental property, most I'd be able to rent that out is for like a thousand bucks a month. Or if I was able to Airbnb it, I'd get 3,000 a month. Same 150, it's the same money but the returns are exaggerated with a business. And this is one of the things because um, I talk a lot of crap about dividend stocks because I see these guys on YouTube who make like dividend stocks are the best thing ever. And I was watching one guy and he broke honest. He said, the reality is that most of us will not be able to get enough dividend stock to have a decent lifestyle and kudos to that guy because you need $2 million worth of dividend stock to have, you know, cause there's one stock that pays like, I think it's Johnson & Johnson, I don't know what it is, but it has a very high dividend, but the P&E of the stock is kind of trash. But once again, Look at the story I just told you. When I can make just, you know, like, honestly, I got out of bed this morning at 930. I, I don't work that hard. This is something that I can keep doing for the rest of my life because it doesn't stress me out. It's not um, wearing me out. And um, it, it's fun. But if I can go ahead and let's talk about this car business. So I start with 150 and I don't take any money out the business. So each month I take the proceeds of the business and buy more cars and put them in the rental cycle. So 
I gotta sit down and do, redo my projections because I'm in this holding pattern. But it'll probably take me a year to get to 100 cars. Now, once I get to 100 cars at $800 per car, that's eighty-eight, that's $80,000 a month in a year of income. 80K a month in income. Now, why is that significant? A few years ago, I wouldn't be able to do this because I didn't have the skills, I didn't have the analyticals, I didn't have the marketing plan. So I'll be able to create within a year a million dollars of revenue from a business I know nothing about, that I never participated in, that I never had any experience in. And even with that, I'm still gonna have the moist parade talking about he ain't that great, so what if he makes, like I saw it in the comment. So the fact that I make millions of dollars a year is lost upon, it's like, well, if he was doing crypto, he could make more. Just completely disregard what I've done because I don't want to water your fantasies on getting rich with crypto. I feel that the people who get rich with crypto are the miners. I feel the people who get rich with crypto got in early. And, you know, there's a vast difference between flipping a few coins and making some money and being rich. There's a big difference. So you made some money with crypto. Kudos to you. Congratulations. Can you go out and pay cash for a Porsche? Oh shit. There I go again, bragging. How dare I say that I am doing bigger and better things than you when you're struggling? How dare I do that? Grow up, grow up. When I was a kid and I was having this conversation with a friend, when there was someone who was better than you, we just like, he's better than me. It was no big deal. But my friend said, and I agree 100%. He said, most of y'all are narcissists. You are legends in your own mind with not one accomplishment. Without one accomplishment. No accomplishment whatsoever in your life. You've done nothing. Yet you feel because you bought some crypto that you're on my level. And I saw that comment, like he could have so much more if he bought crypto. I'm like, fool, I can buy more crypto than you. But here's the thing. Since I've been through four wealth cycles and I know how to make money, I am very confident in my ability to make more money in the future. So I am not seduced by the cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency market, I saw an advertisement the other day. It was a Dogecoin, and it was like, they don't know I'm rich. That's the crypto marketing. It ain't about fundamentals or technicals or uh, case you studies. It's about you can flip a little money into a lot of money. That's what this whole game is played upon. And it's sad that so many of you are so thirsty, thirsty that you don't understand what you don't understand. You don't understand because I'm giving you the blueprint stuff that if you would put down your dreams of getting rich quick, because I know that's what's you. I know that's what's on your mind. I know that's. Like, I just gave you, it took me 13 years to make my first million. 13 years. In a new business. Well, if we want to segment it, the storage auction business, I never became a millionaire. And the YouTube business, 2009, 2012, I became a millionaire. So I could say three years, but it was really built upon the whole 13 year time span. You want to know why? I was learning stuff. I was doing things. 
I was building things. I was creating things. And one of the things that you guys have got to get through your thick skulls, you're not going to cheat the system. You know, the system is like the house in Vegas. There are certain rules that you will play. You can win. But like this crypto is a big cheat. I see it all over the Internet. The common man can get some money. The, the elites can't stop us from getting this money and living our lives and hanging out with big booty Betty, smoking my weed, watching SpongeBob, and just sitting around and being useless. This is why I want to start this channel, The Modern Male, Modern Man. See, I, I fully, I, I was telling my date that I think America is 30 years away from collapse. You wanna know why? Because we have all of these people who are useless. They're not contributing to the greater good. They're not building anything. They're not creating anything. All they seek is self-indulgent pleasure. And this is how this country is gonna literally fall apart. The get over economy. I don't wanna do anything. I want to buy some crypto, make some money. That's what I want to do. That's, that's, that's the game plan. Give big booty Betty the D. Hang out with sexy Slim Susan. Sit around and go to the Atlanta fish market and chill. I don't want to be productive. I don't want to build anything. I don't want to be anybody. No, I don't want to be anyone. And you lazy, moist men who hate it when I call people out. Hate it when I call people out. See, here's the thing. I am a smart person. And I can say that without bragging there he goes again bragging. He making me feel bad about myself because I ain't done shit with my life. You know how I got smart? I wasn't always this smart. I got smart from fucking up. Yeah, that's how I got smart. The more that I fucked up, the smarter I got. Which means taking action, taking risk. Which is what a lot of you moist men refuse to do. You sit up in your little apartment because you don't have houses and you get in your beater because you don't have a nice car and you come to the internet and you look for the cheat code to life. You don't look for applicable business advice. You're looking for the cheat code because you're lazy. And I'm serious. You clowns are going to destroy this country. You're gonna destroy this country. And, you know, it, it, it's like, I feel that the country that I grew up in doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't. We're around all of these rent-seeking people we're around all of these rent seeking people who want to get money and don't want to create any value. And as long as you keep trying to do that, it's not going to go well for you. It's not going to go well. You see people on the internet who are doing well and you don't really, cause let, let me give you an example with the resetting of the content. I'm going to start putting more time and attention in my videos and like I said, I'm gonna remain honest and truthful because that's just who I am. And I'm not gonna start lying because here's some, if I was to lie to you, I could make more money. I can make way more money if I was to lie to you. Plenty of people do it every day on the internet. Plenty of people. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand and appreciate is 
the power of your mindset. Power of your mindset is everything. When you go out with a juggernaut mindset, when you have this awesome mindset where you feel that you can accomplish anything, like let's talk about this car business. I ain't know nothing about the car business and I get people in the comments telling me stuff and then I do my research and I find out that until I get into the marketplace, I'm never gonna know. Because essentially all these comments and stuff, we could talk about the car business, because I had someone that's telling me that I'm not gonna be able to make the margins that I wanna make. And this is where the mindset comes into play. I've had people tell me that you couldn't be successful in the storage auction business. Best month in the storage auction business was like $98,000. That's success, man. And essentially, you don't know me. You don't know my intent. Like when I was a kid, I would literally, do you guys remember Reader's Digest? I used to do the word puzzles in there and I got to the point where like I, I could hit all 25 words. And in the beginning, I used to get like 10 and 15 and I start picking up a, a dictionary and looking up words. And I got to the point where I can get 25. It took me a few years where I can literally hit all 25. Because here's the thing. When you learn one thing, you learn 10 other things. And this is why I know y'all guys are not doing the work. You're not doing the work. You're not putting out the work. Because I'm going to be able to turn the car rental business into a million dollar a year business going from August, because I'm going to give myself from August 2021, and I'm going to document the process, to August 2022. And my goal is to create a million dollars in revenue. And I'm not taking money out of the business for the first year. All that money is just going to go back in the business, buy more cars, put more, more cars in the rental cycle. And then this is something else I'm going to do. I'm going to take some money and I'm going to go to auction and I'm going to buy one car. And then I'm going to flip that car. I'm going to sell that car and take that money, go to auction and buy another car. Then I'm going to flip that car and I'm going to keep doing that. So I'm going to have the rental business over here and I'll be selling cars over here. I'll be doing YouTube, creating courses, starting the credit repair business. And see this credit repair business, because a lot of people will fix your credit, right? I'm going to do way more than that. I'm going to organize, I'm going to fix your credit and I'm going to organize your credit and I'm going to give you tips on how to make more money. Because typically this is where people run into trouble with credit, lack of income. So I'm going to teach you how to stack up your credit. We're, we're going to do a lot of stuff. And today, uh, I am going to get my office, finally, two weeks, waiting on them to like, all right, well, yeah, we're gonna let you come in here and rent this office. So I'm gonna get my office and then I can start applying for my dealer's license. So that's going to be very handy because when I have access to the auction, I can buy cars and I don't have to pay sales tax I don't have to pay dealer's fees. I just have to pay the auction price of the car and then put that car in my rental fleet. So that's going, because essentially what I've decided to do is to uh, wait until I get my dealer's license and just go ahead. I, I should be able to have, on uh, with the current fleet, 12 cars, roll with that until I get my dealer's license, then go to the dealer's auction and then start buying more cars and putting them in the fleet. And essentially, you know, I've heard some people on Instagram that it's like they really appreciate the content because I'm breaking it down. Because here's another thing. I am not afraid to make mistakes. Making mistakes is not a big problem for me. And, you know, I got a lot of people chiming in. You shouldn't have bought the Range Rovers. 
I bought the Range Rovers based upon the data that I got from Turo. And I found out the data was flawed. You know, um, I find it interesting that I'm getting comments from people who cannot even afford to pay cash for their personal vehicle telling me how to run this business. I find it hysterical. Because essentially, I have a rule. If you're not more successful than me, I'm not going to listen to you. It just not. It makes no sense. Because why would I listen to someone who ain't successful because they have an opinion? When I know from years and years and years of experience that the only thing that's going to get you real marketplace data is participating in the marketplace. All of these ideals and assumptions, like someone who was trying to be helpful, I'm not gonna slam this person, um, he was recommending this service. With the number of cars I have, I'll be paying them 15, 20,000 a month. They ain't gonna work. I can hire one employee to do that and be way cheaper. Even if I play this employee 4,000 a month, way cheaper. So um, I'm gonna build this thing organically and I'm going to build the credit services and, you know, I'm going to start advertising and, you know, I got a lot of ideals to put to paper and then I got to start doing tests because one test that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my commercial insurance and I'm going to rent out cars for a thousand bucks a month. And it's like, this is the pitch. Hey, you got bad credit. I already know that. That's why you're here. But if you rent this car from me for X amount of months, and I'm going to be really explicit, like you've got to rent the car. There is no we're going to move to you buying the car and putting some money down. You got to rent the car to build the relationship. And once you build that relationship, there could be other things on the table. I'm going to help you do a lot of other things. So one of the things that we're going to do is build this business organically. We're gonna do our own marketing. I'm gonna have my own insurance. And I'm gonna run that test and see which is better because hire car is pretty fast. Hire car is pretty fast when they're um, coming out with stuff. So I don't know if I'm gonna post this before the break. I don't know. I'm gonna upload it to YouTube. The, the video where I'm taking a break seems to be doing really, really well. That's kind of funny because I, I really didn't expect that to do that well. But that's all I got for you guys. Look for the updates. If you're on the email list, you're going to be getting a lot of emails and I'm going to be doing a lot of new and different things. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.